Hey there, hello, how are you? I hope you're having a lovely day. So uh, there are a couple of topics in our Linux community, in uh, in the Linux related world, in free software world that are worth uh, talking about a little bit more. So that is the reason why I have made two videos in a row about Flatpak and I'm going to make a third one I like to wrap it up a little bit uh, and then we can switch to some other topics uh, in the f near future. Uh, let me switch to another picture. So I'm going to read some with uh, I'm going to read through some of your comments and just make an on the fly uh, commenting uh, on what you have been replying to me so that we can kind of uh, gather uh, a sort of uh, conclusion, right? A and so we can move on. Um, so about my flat pack uh, questions, right? It, it, it is a distribution platform for desktop applications only not meant for system level on, or command line programs. So in theory, this is uh, pretty much correct. Uh, all things considered, uh, command line programs can be distributed via Flatpak, also uh, even better uh, via Snaps, but generally this statement kind of holds the water, yes. Uh, other traditional tools are, are better for these things. The runtimes for the most common desktop targets are rather large, so the first few applications you install will use significant disk space. I mean, yes, yes, pr pretty much. Um, when you install the normal uh, package from your repository that is being delivered from your distribution of choice, then usually you get libraries distributed through the same uh, way and if you install some other applications right they will be hooked up with these same libraries so libraries don't get duplicated right everything is uh, tied around the same set of libraries set versions we're, we're talking about um, stable distributions now not, not rolling stable ones are like that and um, with Flatpak, of course, uh, uh, an application developer that is use, doing um, uh, application A, they are going to choose to be tied uh, with some runtimes, uh, specific versions that they have tested. Uh, application B might be hooked up with these same runtimes, but different versions, and now we have two. Uh, there is also some deduplication going going on uh, in in Flatpak system, so uh, it, it's not all doom and gloom, right? There, there is, um, you know, if a runtime is like one gigabyte and the other one is also one gigabyte, uh, if some files are shared uh, between them, then it won't be uh, exactly twice as large. Also, if um, the application is kind of, a, how do I put it, hard-coded, with, with bundled with some libraries, so not dependent on shared libraries, uh, and another, another application does the same, you would think that uh, it is taking up uh, the double of, of space, right? Because uh, everything is bundled here, everything is bundled there. But no, Flatpak is taking care of um, looking up the, the what, do, what do you call it, hashes uh, of the files. So if it detects uh, same files here and there, uh, it will just use up um, one amount of space for that file. I'm not sure if I explained it right, but uh, the duplication is a thing and the space will not be as large as you might think. Uh, when you list your um, installed Flatpak applications and libraries and runtimes. Uh, but when you do list them, it kind of looks ugly if you see four times the, the same thing, right? Uh, the concept of Flatpak is great. Uh, it's just when you need more RAM. Uh, why, why do I need more RAM and storage space? I'm not sure actually why would I need more RAM. I mean, if the application from pulled from your repository of your Debian distribution uh, is loading, it will have to load everything that it requires to work. Uh, if the application uh, is downloaded from Flatpak, 
uh, it will also need the same stuff in order to load up into your memory so i'm not sure about the ram thing uh, but yeah storage um, uh, of course yes uh, a lot of people can afford more storage but we the linux community we are usually a lot of us are kind of a minimalistic uh, users we a lot of us tend to optimize stuff for our, our computers and this is kind of natural for for way too many of us so uh, the argument that storage is cheap is not the argument that you're looking for uh, it may be cheap yes but that, that's not the um that's th that's not the positive uh, for Flatpak, right? Nowadays, um, and enough native up up applets, native applets exist. I'm not sure what he means by applets. I like that uh, I can run an app and never have to worry for dependency dependency hell. So, um, yes, this this works for Flatpak. Yes, you just install from Flatpak, and everything is taken care of. And this is this is by design. Uh, it also made making containers more convenient for my for my where's the rest of it use case okay I have to decrease the um, the um, zoom in here uh, flatpak steam is using other folders you cannot switch between package uh, and flatpak version sometimes important no so I have uh, actually uh, switched from uh, normal packaged um, steam in my previous Debian installation to the snap version and then to the uh, flatpak version and then back to the debian packaging because i wanted to compare all three and although i have had various problems with games not working uh, on the uh, snap version of steam and on the flatpak version of steam i did not actually have problems switching because uh, steam folders are steam folders right so you can just take them uh, from where they are and move them into your new uh, place where you have the uh, flatpak version it's it's not unreachable right you you can move all your all your stuff to the new place so that's um maybe you cannot use steam uh, in parallel, but I guess you could do it with simlinks or something. I'm not sure uh, But generally if you're moving once it's not a big deal uh, anytime that you're moving from um, uh, uh, Packages that come from your repository of your distribution to a flatpak version uh, It's not a big deal. You, you can just move the folders if you know where are the paths. Uh, this reminds me of how contain containerization and distrobox allow pretty much any Linux uh, distro under the sun to run with a package system all of the same session. Uh, tinkering with both FlatHub and distrobox doesn't diminish the unique uh, function of each OS. Yeah, I would I would agree uh, agree with this uh, statement. Yes, because uh, le let's let's take one. Um, a, a bit different example for example uh, nitrox linux distribution this is an immutable distribution and it's rather unpopular uh, but um, it has some of its unique advantages uh, if you are into uh, the immutable distributions right by default they are um, packaging uh, app images via some store i forgot the name of it uh, but they also give you an option to use flat packs. So distrobox is what comes to the um, rescue, right? If you need everything else uh, on this immutable distribution because you can't really install anything. It's a kind of a Debian based uh, operating system, but without the uh, apt packaging system. You, you cannot install anything from uh, Debian repository or, or similar, right? Thanks to this video, I have learned something new. I didn't know I can check Flatpak's risk deals, uh, details. Oh, okay, you're welcome, man. Uh, and after manual sealing their access, it doesn't look so bad after all. I mean, that's the point, right? Uh, the, these containers uh, offer you some switches which you can turn off and on, to toggle them a little bit, and uh, they um, have less access to your system, right? Every distribution now can have the same set of programs. FlatHub, yes. Uh, I can use Debian, the largest number of packages are Alpine uh, and Flatpaks uh, and etc, right? 
Oh, there's more. Arshu's repository definitely trusts the creator of the software more than random hour build. So this is a little bit contentious um, conversation, right? This is something I said and uh, I got a little bit on my nose by uh, the our, uh, our fans, right? So our is not so bad, but in my opinion, I, I'm still not convinced about the there is a lot of value in our, no doubt about that, but uh, I am not, um, how do I put it, I'm a fresh Arch user and I am used to using the official packaging repository from my distribution and our feels like um, some kind of a flat packy system, N not flat pack, of course, not flat, pa flat pack, but it, it, it feels a little bit external alien i don't know how to put it they any anyone can upload uh, anything they want to the um, our or to the uh, flat pack so in that regard it's kind of similar uh, but um, the original application developers usually don't upload to aur i think please correct me if i'm mistaken right uh, but on the uh, flat hub there are decent number of uh, original authors who are uh, packaging their stuff there and offering solid support for that. So I know I'm going to get crucified for this for, from Arch users, but uh, I kind of prefer uh, to download stuff from um, FlatHub if, if it is maintained and uploaded by the original application author who I am getting a uh, decent support from, right? Uh, compared to the, well, anything from AUR. Uh, Flatpak popularity might even hurt more rolling releases, variants, distributions. Uh, I, I don't think I have any um, anything to, to counter this statement. Next step, immutable distros uh, and Android as example. Uh, I, I would put rather uh, Fedora Silver Blue, Blue as an example instead of Android, but okay. Uh, because we already used to App Store, Play Store, Mint Flat Hub, so the change will be a formality. Uh, okay, I, I understand where he's going with that. Uh, this topic is really interesting to me. I have a distaste for snaps, for specifically because they are awful to work with in my experience. Also, nearly every useful snap is classic or unconfined. Uh, flat packs have not have had the same issue yet for me, though I haven't tried them in a multi-user setup as I have with snaps. Um, well, unconfined snaps is, um, I guess it is what it is, right? Missy, uh, when you go to the flat hub, you will um, no doubt check the permissions before you download something and you will check who uploaded it. Uh, so you can do basically the same with snaps, don't, just don't install uh, what you um, feel like it's not a good idea to install from the trust perspective. For me the biggest downside of flat packs is their size comparing to for example the same app in the repository. I, I have already answered that one uh, on the previous post up there. I always prefer native packages over universal packages. I only use flat packs if there is no other option i rather add a uh, ppa manually okay this is concerned ubuntu and similar uh, if i have to install or using flat uh, flat pack but the ppa must be an official one as well okay i basically agree with everything said here i am pretty much the same uh, in in my behavior uh, towards all this stuff uh, my problem with Flatpak is that it's, it's a bit hustle to upload your software. To example, compared to our, also I like to, I like that you license uh, that you or your license is Creative Commons. I'm not sure about the licensing uh, in any of these cases, so I'm gonna have to ask some of you who are watching to to comment on this, please. I have an issue with Flatpak when software is only distributed via Flatpak. A popular tool for, tool, tool for playing Roblox uh, Sober is closed source and only distributed via Flatpak. Double whammy for not feeling right. It's Linux. Linux is about freedom. 
freedom of choice and there are plenty of these choices right so uh, in the comments to my various videos i have seen a lot of people with a firm attitude if it's not free software i'm not installing it period so I don't think uh, the people who made such comments are giving up on anything. This is just like a firm stance. Uh, and if we would have enough of these uh, firm stances uh, and like, um, I don't know if you, if you call them based people uh, or something like that, <laughs> um, we would get m less uh, of the closed source uh, applications right so um, it, it's some, if it if this is some kind of a tool uh, for what is it like modifying a game or whatever I'm not sure what 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 the uh, sober is but I don't think there is a good reason for something like that to be closed source but then again um, I'm not the expert on their business right I don't even know what that is I don't mind Flatpak in my distribution does not have uh, an application, but Flatpak has, I use the Flatpak version. I also discovered that some applications are working better as Flatpak. Uh, for example, Discord on Arch is sometimes a little bit outdated, so Discord wants to update, which does not work. But with the pla Flatpak version, I don't have this problem. And as Flatpaks can only provide, provide, provide uh desktop applications i don't think the flatpak diminishes the role of the distribution the uh, kernel tools and desktop environment oh crap sorry about that if i unzoom too much then the whole layout of youtube changes and i lost i, I lose track where i am so i'm gonna just leave it at this uh so basically yeah the, the discord is a unique example in this because uh, they have uh, fixed updates, uh, fixed forced updates. Uh, that, that, that word is important. These are forced updates. So when it's time to update, you have to update or the application is not working, period. And if you're pulling from um, Arch uh, repository um, and if the Arch repository maintainer is a little bit late, it happens that they are late uh, just a couple of hours. Uh, and in those couple of hours, if um, the Discord has made the update uh, through their server side, you will not be able to use Discord at all uh, uh, until you're waiting uh, for the maintainer to update the, the application, right? Uh, with uh, Flatpak, this is a little bit easier uh, simply because um, Discord is maintaining their own uh, Flatpak version, so they, ma they make sure that they update it on Flathub uh, first and then push it to the server uh, so the server tells everyone you can no longer use the old version you must use the new one which you have uh, practically al already updated right if it's a flatpak version um, my main issue with flatpak is that the default permissions are so broad uh, that the sandboxing is rendered moot and gives a false sense of security I, I can understand the point of this, um, I, I'm just not sure how to comment on that because the uh, Flatpak system is not um, supposed to give you um, an infinite uh, sense of security, right? You, you still should not install stuff that you don't trust, right? So these permissions are just w what they say they are. Uh, don't write to that folder, don't write to that folder, write only to this folder, use only the camera, don't use the camera, use only, uh, you know, turn the one on and off, right? These, these switches, uh, what, what you need. What I would like to see uh, with, uh, with these switches, right, that uh, enable or disable permissions in the flat, flatback system, I would like to see uh, how phones behave, right? So when you install the applications, there aren't uh, any uh, permissions at all, like zero permissions. Uh, so there would not be any default permissions in my um, um, in my ideal scenario. So basically, when you would install Discord, it will have zero permissions. Then you would want to upload a file from your pictures folder and then it should pop up with a request through the Flatpak system uh, that uh, it's begging you to enable access to your pictures folder. And then when you start the video call, then uh, the pop-up 
for requesting from you the access to camera and microphone would pop up so at that point you would have enabled only two of these permissions right so the default permission set would not be broad actually it would be zero this is how i would like to see it in the future uh, but that uh, requires a little bit of coordination between the flat pack and uh, basically the the i suppose desktop environments that you're using Freedom of choice is GNU slash Linux biggest benefit and biggest disability. There is very little consensus on how things should move forward. Flatpak, app image snaps could all become the go-to thing to use, but none of them will. Uh, this is a little bit pessimistic, uh, but generally I also don't have any uh, legit arguments against this statement because this might as well uh, turned out to be true as this person said uh, I guess we will have to wait and see right uh, just checking out the take you button does it work Hvala and thank you as well uh, Krleža uh, I should be more responsible uh, I think you're right about flat packs not being a total replacement for traditional distro packages but I am interested to see what happens in the immutable distro scene this, this is something I have answered uh, previously uh, many immutable distros rely heavily on flat packs especially those that are based on Fedora so I can see that if immutable distros became popular on the desktop we may be facing a situation where flat packs are the way to get uh, I, I suppose Linux applications I don't want to decrease the font size again um, in my opinion uh, this th this won't this won't happen um, there is a lot of Linux users who are against any of these uh, packaging systems and they only want uh, legit applications distributed to uh, a classic way through their distribution of choice and these people uh, w are have all of their right to do that and to drag their um, how do I put it to, to, to try to steer the future into the direction where Linux already is uh some other people will cheer for this some other ones will cheer for a third option and in the end i think for for the longest time we will still have uh multiple choices uh, on uh, linux distributions uh, for snaps i'm not so sure because snaps have uh, some advantages over flat pack from the technical side but also the disadvantage is that they rely on systemd and systemd is not available in some linux distributions and there are a lot of uh, users who don't want to switch to a distribution uh, which is using systemd so snaps are not technically possible on these distributions so i'm not sure how well will snap uh, system uh, catch uh, in the future we, we are going to have to see about that flat packs will stick a little bit more in my opinion but uh, th all of this will stay in my, uh, in my opinion there, there will be no one way to install applications maybe uh, a lot of us um, uh, people who teach new users how to use uh, uh, Linux will tell the new user like just use flat packs this is uh, the most simple well way for you to learn and to get on board and later when you're more comfortable into hacking your own Linux distributions then uh, you will see that there are more options so I, I think flat pack is kind of uh, you know like Zorin or Mint distribution but in terms of packaging right it's a uh, really beginner uh, friendly and uh, a nice thing to to recommend to, to friends right I have a friend who is relatively fresh into diving into Linux desktop like fully um, I, I will not name him uh, but um, he, uh, he, he he has experience with Linux be from before right but right um, but recently he jumped on Linux on desktop uh, like like fully fully 
and he asked me like how do I install this application and I just told him I mean use flat packs don't bother with uh, older applications on Debian because uh, newer versions of these particular applications that you need have bugs fixed uh, and these bugs are not fixed on the Debian repository because they are hosting the old ones so just don't bother install flat packs it's it's all right it's it's not uh, uh, you know, it's not calling for the devil. It's uh, it's fine. Flat packs are fine. Don't worry about it. Uh, Jan says Danke in German and Danke to you as well, Jan. Uh, well, what is an immutable distro user to do? Up images, overlays. Okay, this question sounds like uh, he has. Um, I can't tell if he's uh, if from the name he or she. Uh, so. Um, this question sounds like I have said something that has been um, taken as uh, don't use flat packs. I did not mean that, if that's what this is um, referring to, right? Uh, you absolutely can use whatever you want, right? App images are fine in their own way. For example, I have this keyboard, right, from System76, and this keyboard can be reprogrammed, which is something that, that I did previously, multiple times. And the easiest way to reprogram this keyboard is to uh, download the application from uh, System76, uh, which is in app image format. You just download it to just one file, you run it, uh, and there is a tool for... Uh, reconfiguring all the keys and you're done. You don't need to install anything. So for these kind of applications uh, there um, is this packaging format app images. It, it's perfect. Like it's just something that you run occasionally and you don't really need it uh, installed on your system. Uh, there are different examples where this uh, packaging system is better for this use case and where this packaging system is better for that use case. So, you know, experiment, see what works for you. It's all good. My fr problem with Flatpak is that not enough developers have official Flatpak releases. Uh, I would agree with this if I would have the same uh, feeling, but uh, I actually don't. I mean, the applications that I have installed from Flatpak system are all from the original maintainer. Um, there, of course, are um, packages on FlatHub that are uploaded by random people, but I just don't download those. I like the idea of more than one package manager, manager per system. Core stuff can be updated natively, but uh, programs that run for more specific purposes and with more narrow behavior, like the idea of them being handled by Flatpak, uh, with ideally minimal permissions, just for organization reasons, if you use uh, one or two KDE programs, but not the win window manager itself, uh, you'll find that your update, I actually know what it says in the in the rest of this um, uh, sentence, but I'm not going to uh, change the, the zoom level. So, um, th this guy is saying that it's uh, more practical to install uh, just the application that you need, uh, for example, like KD P PDF Viewer, I think it's Oc Ocular, uh, just from Flatpak, and, and it's like bundled, right? No, 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 too many dependencies. Uh, and if you pull Ocular from your distribution of choice, it will pull like a uh, hundred other packages because it depends on all kinds of things, right? Uh, it it, bec it becomes messy through time, and if you don't want Ocular, but then some other PDF reader, you can just uh, remove it from Flatpak. Uh, but if you change your mind like a month later, you will not really remember which packages have been pulled uh, from your package repository, right? Especially on Debian, if you use apt, uh, it's, it's not always easy to roll back uh, which packages have been pulled um, automatically. Um, they do get flagged uh, as pulled automatically, but as time goes by, it, this, this became, becomes more complex to clean up if you are trying to uninstall something. If you are uninstalling the same day, day no problem, just remove the package and auto remove the rest. But as, as I said, later as time goes by, this becomes more of a, a problem. Uh, 122, oh wait, yeah, I remember that. 
I'm glad you liked it. Um, took you almost 11 minutes to say you are an arch user, by the way. Respect in holding back so long. Uh, well, I, I mean, I'm a relatively fresh arch user, so I guess that's kind of a reason why um, I'm not... Uh, telling everyone that I use Arch Linux, by the way. Uh, so um, I I have more. Um, I need to more. I need I need more practice to to get there. Right. I'm gonna get there. I'm going to become uh, a real Arch user. No, I'm not. I'm just kidding. Uh, I'm going to remove Arch sooner or later to switch to something else because I want to learn uh, everything. I want to learn how every Linux distribution works. And the way that I do this uh, is um, usually I install a distribution, I start uh, testing it like on my laptop, and if it passes my initial uh, feeling, I'm, uh, what I mean by feeling, in the first week or two, if I don't run into some major deal breaker for me, uh, there is a good chance that I will use it for a week or two more on the laptop and then move it over to my primary mach machine, my primary PC, and then I'm going to use it on both of these machines for the next half a year. Uh, usually it takes about a half a year to get, um, you know, to get a good feeling how the um, distribution works. You, you cannot test a new distribution that you haven't tested before uh, in uh, two weeks. It, it, it's it's not enough. When I see uh, someone making a review of a distribution they never tried, tried before and they like openly admit that they have reviewed it for a day. No. You, you, I mean, you, you, in one day you can review how the um, default team on the desktop looks what else can you review in one day? You, you need proper experience. You need to use it. You need to uh, have all kinds of uh, challenges with it. You need to solve problems. You need to communicate with people on forums uh, uh, that you know on, on forums of that particular distribution. You need to have problems, the real life problems that um, uh, hamper your. Um, daily workflow and then you need to solve them on your own or with help of someone but you need to find solutions uh, and all this takes a lot of time and when you solve everything uh, that, that you have been um, that, that bothers you with a particular distribution it's already a few months that have passed at that point and in the end, you might not be completely satisfied, satisfied uh, with the distribution that you're testing. You might be satisfied, uh, but either way, you will have an opinion after some months, right? So in my opinion, it takes about a half a year to, 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 to have a really, really good uh, opinion that you can share around and like um, stand behind what you are, are saying, right? Um, for shady software, I use virtual machines, uh, simple as that, I can monitor the activity and it, if, if it works 100% fine in an offline VM, I have zero reason to move it uh, to the main operating system. This is, uh, this is one way to do it, perfectly fine. Uh, nothing wrong with uh, Arch user repository. It's really no different than grabbing the source and compiling yourself. I have no issue with flat packs, snaps are garbage. Uh, but using built packages from the Arch user repository is definitely preferable. Your trust issues have nothing to do with the Arch user repository, by the way. I would say uh, you should have more uh, trust issues. Um, I think uh, he meant, I think he's saying flat pack in the end. I'm not going to take too much time answering this because I have answered it a couple of times already. Uh, I am relatively fresh Arch user and I personally don't feel Arch user repository is a thing that I will ever like. And if anything manages to convince me otherwise, all power to them or to it. but. I don't see myself using Arch user repository. Uh, I do see myself using flat packs. It is what it is. Like it, don't like it. Hate me, don't hate me. 
this is my opinion this is my perf- personal reference i guess it, the preference is actually the wrong word but i cannot uh, think, think about the exact one in english uh but you know if if not user if if avoiding uh, arch user repository makes me not a real arch user then you know so be it um, i don't know what to tell you man uh, expel me from the arch user uh you know uh friendship uh not using any of it this is uh possibly the best reply so far uh that's why windows is king i have no idea what this means uh, let's switch to another one. The, this one has uh, some less comments. In about nine months in on my Linux journey, I started le- learning about uh, on Macintosh with all software on five floppies and no hard drive. In nineties, I learned. I have no idea what this guy is saying. Absolutely, even a smaller distro or one that doesn't have all the packages or the large one use Alpine as a desktop operating system can be fully operational if you are able to access flat packs. The centralized update distribution of the apps is so much more efficient than having a maintainer for all the different repos. Uh, the thing with Flatpak's OBS is that it is the officially maintained version, so it should be the one most people install if able to. So this is pretty much how I see things, you know. Uh, another thing with Flatpak is the ability to have the same package versions with other people regardless of the distro they use. Uh, this is especially used for for games and emulation. Uh, Flatpak is that one friend who brings everyone together. Uh, when I read this for the first time, I thought of Nokia. Nokia phones, right? I agree. I have found myself using them a lot recently. Whether it be having to troubleshoot, install additional packages, etc. Flatpak just works. Uh, just works. Uh, uh, although there are some limitations, as it is sandboxed exactly, uh, and one of two others, it works more than it fails to compare to other packages, uh, package maintainers. In my personal experience, um, I did not actually get this uh, feeling. Um, I, I would say that packages delivered through the native uh, package repository of your uh, distribution actually work a lot more. A lot more sounds stupid. Uh, what I meant is that these packages usually just work, while flat packs have some kind of limitations uh, which come and go depending on what the application is doing, right? Uh, it has its ups and downs, they are not terrible or as obscure as snaps. Uh, the standardization that it brings is clearly a pro for smaller distros, but the programs have to be bigger since they have to work for every distribution. They also run slower than native packages. Okay, this is, this is actually correct. Uh, they do take a little bit more to boot up. Uh, for me, flat packs are good when my distro doesn't have the programs I want, but uh, if I have both options, I always prefer native. Okay, uh, love the Red Hat. Thank you very much. Uh, I have better user experience with Flatpak when the software is officially supported on Flatpak. I tried installing Session with Package Manager. Sync didn't work because mobile app had a newer version. Flatpak just works. Not the best at the cost of higher resource com- consumption, but less headache uh, for the user. And the latest and greatest. You're not going to replace everything with it anyway. I have to respect respect majority opinion, but mine is different. Flatpak is the last option. If I were a developer, I would create source code and whoever wants uh, can do own package, uh, even Flatpak from it. Making Flatpak hub only, um, only right way is not a freedom to me. Um, Flatpak is the last option for you. Perfectly fine, of course. Uh, if I were a developer, I would create source code developers of free software do that. Uh, and whoever wants can do it. So the thing that I have a problem with this is um, if someone takes your code, you're a developer of an application and you put up uh the source code online and i don't know the license is gpl or something like that uh and someone else someone completely random comes and uh, compiles your software puts it on flat hub uh, and i see that it lacks the um, verified check mark that 
the application uploaded on FlatHub is yours, I will not install it. I see how you see it. Uh, I just don't agree. Uh, I wouldn't install it. I don't trust the random Joe. Uh, it doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel right. I get the point why flat packs become so be, became so popular. But how do you get ten uh, tens of megabytes of download speed? Um, I have no idea. I, I just download them. The speed is what it is. I suppose the server is close enough to me, so the speed is um, fine. Uh, is the Flatpak server standing? Yes, yes. The Flatpak server is actually b behind this wall here. Um, you had flat Flatpaks because the server is not fast enough uh, from your location. Well, I suppose you could ask the GNOME Foundation to invest a little bit more money into installing more geo-dislocated servers so that you get one closer to your location. Because GNOME Foundation is not poor, they have the money, uh, they could install, uh, you know, more servers. Uh, they eat a lot of this space, fine. Plus takes ages. To, okay, okay, okay. What are you doing wrong here? Nothing. You you just need to tell GNOME to give us more servers, give us more speed. And Amir Parla uh, reacting with uh, a celebration emoji, pretty appro appropriate for the last comment we are reading today. Um, what, what do you think? Uh, this uh, video has dragged for possibly the longest ever video I have created uh, besides my uh, uh, fireside chat with Vaxri, the uh, uh, developer of Hyperland. But from the normal videos that I did, I think this one definitely uh, kicks the longest minutes in. And you, if you have if you have managed to come this far, I thank you very much for sticking for so long. I am aware that this, that, that this takes a lot of energy and concentration to listen. Uh, if you, even if you have just been listening to this uh, in, in the background or something, thank you also very much. Uh, and um, if you can uh, hit that thank you button or, or visit my page on Coffee. Uh, or even just leave a like, right? Uh, I'm gonna see you in the next video and the next in the next one uh, we'll change topics a little bit, maybe switch to uh, uh, my free BSD installation on my laptop. We'll see, we'll see. See you in the next one.